at what you're up to this weekend. And if you are watching this on the replay, first of all, thank you so much for watching the After Live. <laughs> and let me know in the comments below what you plan on doing this weekend or maybe what you already did this weekend. Um, I'm Greg, welcome to Stationary Shenanigans, where we usually have a Friday night live stream where we journal and chat about our week and just have a good time. So I would like to share that I am doing something different on this Friday. I am doing Fountain Pen Friday, which I just made up, just like I used to make up Frappuccino Friday when I wanted Frappuccino on Fridays. Um, so normally I like to work in my traveler's notebook with you all and draw my little cat and kind of do, you know, my memory keeping journaling. But lately I've just been really wanting to try harder to use my fountain pens more, whether that looks like doing long form journaling with them, using them in my traveler's notebook for my doodles or using them in my planner or using them for my work. Because now that I am teaching writing and doing my PhD, I write a lot, <laughs> whether it be actual papers or feedback to students. Um, I have about 100 to 200 pages per week of readings that I have to read and annotate and present and all that fun stuff. So I write a lot more than usual. Um, I will say when I was doing my master's program, I felt like because I was only there one or two nights a week with like, like a physical presence, I wasn't physically writing as much as I am now being on campus all day. Um, so I'm on campus all day, three days a week, and then there on Tuesday afternoons and evenings having off Thursday. So it's kind of like four days a week, which is a lot, but anyway, we don't even need a reason. We just want to use fountain pens more, right? Or we want to just enjoy the hobby. So I have a few fountain pen issues and just wanted to get your input on if you use fountain pens, um, any tips or tricks. And yeah. And Sophia Isabel is here. Thank you for coming. I hope you're doing well and you're set to have a great weekend. Go ahead and grab yourself a nice beverage. I made a cafe au lait, a nice coffee to start off the Friday nights. And yeah, analog planners here. Yes, I just started. I was having technical difficulties. I don't know if anyone else uses the YouTube app, but it kept freezing on me and it was triple posting what I was posting. And I had just done the Apple update on my iPod. I saw, I mean iPod, <laughs> iPad. Um, I saw in the news that Apple released a security feature that they were urging people to update. So I wanted to update my phone and iPad immediately. Um, so maybe it has something to do with the YouTube app on the update. I don't know. So anyway, we're here now. Happy Friday. Coffee, fountain pens, good company, us chatting. And yeah, so I've been thinking about my Quebeco, Kaweco Sport lately. Um, I really just like the smaller size of it and I could see myself carrying this around on campus. And I actually had a professor two years ago who used the Kaweco in the rollerball. Um, and I just thought that was a cool thing. So yeah, you have no advice. YouTube, you really wanted to let you know you inspired me to feel, <gasps> you made a video? Oh, and it's your Hobo Nietzsche unboxing? Oh my goodness, it, okay, we're definitely, Everyone, when you're done watching me, let's go ahead and watch Analog Planner's video. Um, I will certainly do that once we're off the live stream. If, I think you were, were you here? You were here last week where we talked about um, our predictions for when people were gonna post their Hobonichi <laughs> unboxing videos. I have not watched any yet, but yours will be the first that I watch. I can't wait to see what you're getting. I plan on ordering a Hobonichi something this year. Might not be an actual planner, but I feel left, I, I had great FOMO in 2023 not ordering any Hobonichi products because surprisingly, I actually like a lot of their products. I use the drawer pouch, whatever you call this one for my inks. I use the small drawer pouch pretty much daily. This holds my journaling supplies. So I love their stuff and I'm curious to see some of the changes and yeah. 
Cat Smith is here. Hi, Cat. Happy Friday. Let us know what you're up to this weekend. Anna Lux says, you didn't pay attention when the first one came out. It took me ever to film and edit my own. It gets better. The more you make videos, edit videos, the only, like, my main advice, because it took me so long before I would even film a YouTube video. Like, I would watch everyone's videos and comment for, like, probably a couple years, um, would interact with them on live streams or Instagram Live or whatever they were, um, but I had no idea logistically, like, how do you do this? Like, how do I have my camera view my desk? How do I watch the comments while also doing stuff? How do I edit? How do I upload? How do I uh, see the comments people leave me? How do I see my mentions, which took me almost a year and a half to figure out when other people tag me? It's just, it's just wild. And you can watch a million instructional videos, how to, how to, which is what I did. And in the end, that doesn't always help. <laughs> it's trial and error, right? So just try stuff as long as you're not flashing your social security number or your credit card number um, on your channel, you really can't fail. So before you know it, you'll be an expert. So we are going to watch Analog Planner's video after this. Cat didn't order anything from Hobonichi and any planner. I just feel like I have to for 2024. I feel left out from the 2023. But also, in all fairness, it is only September. It is still extremely hot out, does not feel like fall yet. So I can't even think about my 2024 planner. I'm still in summer mode of 2023. So in my head, 2024 is like seven months away from now. <laughs> so we're not even going there yet. We're, we're gonna just keep living in this moment in 2023. Have a little coffee. So let's talk about Quebeco Sports. Zen Glyph is here. Welcome. I'm so glad you could join us. Happy Friday. Let us know what you're up to this weekend. We're doing a little fountain pen video, which is different than my other live videos. Because why not? Oh, okay. Is Travelers releasing something? Okay, so next month would be the 2024 Travelers Company release. Or is there going to be some new thing that I missed, like a new color or a new shape or something? Because... That would be awesome. Cat's not gonna order anything. You're happy with your bullet journal. Okay, great, that's awesome. Anything you use is worth sticking with. 2024. Do we know the theme of Traveler's Company 2024? So it turns out my Quebec Sport was empty. If you watched a video a while back, I think I tried to write with this empty and I was claiming that it was dried out. Um, and the reality is I had no cartridge in there. So I clearly don't learn my lessons. Anyway, I, uh, this is a gold nib and I bought the clip that is black because I thought it kind of looks cool with like the olive. I think this is called olive um, and black. But I decided let's take off the clip because that is one cool thing about Quebeco is that you don't have to keep the clip on or you can order rose gold or whatever. I think I'm going to try using it without the clip and putting this in my campus pencil case. So let's pick out a cartridge to ink it up and test it out. And for anyone who's not sure, the Quebeco does accept standard international ink cartridges, which I have tons of. And I want to take a look at what I actually have. Town is, Traveler's Town is the theme. So like, like things in a town, like little buildings and stuff, or like travel related things. I don't know if any of you all follow Job's journal, but I guess now he works for Plotter USA and they did a live stream yesterday to show the new blue Plotter binder and the blue paper, and I was on a conference call, but I really wanted to be on the live to like, also increase his numbers and show support and make some comments and stuff. So I was watching the live on my phone, muted, trying to read the comments while I'm sitting on a Teams call or a WebEx call, like with my face in front of my computer, like paying attention to the conference call and somehow trying to interact too with the Instagram live stream. 
don't recommend it. Don't get yourself in trouble at work or anything like that. I knew I could swing it. <laughs> um, and it was kind of cool to see that kind of thing live, but. So I don't know if I have any Quebeco actual cartridges. I'll just do a rundown of some random cartridges I have. This is like my bag of cartridges that I've collected over the years. Most of this stuff I got in Poland or um, in when I was in Slovakia or Austria, um, because ink cartridges there are like a fraction of the price. I think usually they're less than a dollar. These I bought in Russia probably for less than a dollar. So. I'm gonna not do brown because anyone who remembers, <laughs> I was using the Cognac Brown from Faber Castell in my Quebeco, and as much as I love brown and green, and now that we're getting a fall mode and brown seems like a good color, I'm just not doing it. I want to mix it up, so no brown. Analog Planner says Barber Bakery Ice Cream Parlor Record Store. Okay. I think I'm also gonna have to order some of the 2024 Travelers Company because that theme sounds awesome. The last theme I think I really bought into was the coffee one, which was that last year. Um, I never got any of the diner editions. I missed that boat. And I forget what else. But uh, the town one sounds awesome. Okay, the Schneider, which is just blue. This is also a brown from Herbin. We're not gonna do that because we're not doing brown. But now that I'm looking, I pretty much have a limited choice of ink colors and cartridges. Um, so this is online. These are just blue. This is just blue. Yeah, like I bought these last time in Vienna and it was 32 cents. And that was a couple years ago. The last time I was there was before COVID, so. But still, that's nothing compared to like what you would pay. If you can even find standard ink cartridges in store in the US, usually you just order them. Um, I have some random um, Pen refills I bought last time I was in either, I don't know, either, I think it was when I was in Dresden or maybe I was in Katowice, I don't know. I miss traveling, y'all. I just, I'm adjusting to my whole new lifestyle here, which includes like, te obviously teaching and all that, but I don't know, it's, a lot of energy. I feel very tired at the end of every workday and I didn't feel that before with my government job. So I'm still in that adjustment period. That's all right. But maybe we're gonna do the Pelican Turquoise. I don't know. I don't think Turquoise ink coming out of this color pen would just feel right. Whew. Um. The question is, do I have a converter for Quebeco? And I don't know. Some of y'all, some of my fountain pen friends here could tell me. This is, I don't know. This is definitely a, no. I guess we can just try it. Yeah, this, I don't think I have a Quebeco quarter. Uh, uh, not quarter. Ugh, my brain's starting to, um, uh, converter. I think this is the pilot one because it has that like, did anyone hear that? That's that new pilot one. Like, I don't even know what, what's this from? I just have a bag of little labels with my ink. Like I must have got the ink. I don't know. Um, these are just random refills that I guess I kept with my inks, thinking that would come in handy, and clearly not doing too good. Okay, do I have another? Ugh. All right, so I have a black Pelican. Maybe I'll use that, because y'all know I didn't have a great experience with Pelican at the DC Pen Show, and I've kind of been boycotting them in my head lately. Um, okay, so I have Royal Blue, Brilliant Black, Okay, apparently I just have blues and blacks and browns. 
And that worm turquoise, why am I... Why am I not stepping up to the plate here with international cartridges? Does anyone buy um, international cartridges in different colors? And if so, where do you get them? And do you have any that you recommend? Uh, yeah, I guess the Quebec one would be tiny. Um, yeah, this is this has to be a pilot, but it's probably this size or smaller. Let's not break anything. Um, This is Sailor. This is the Sailor Blue Ink I talked about before. This I did, I ended up not loving. It's not blue enough for me, if that makes sense. I was thinking more of the Pilot. Is it like the Namiki or something? They're like the regular blue. I had a bottle years ago, but when I moved from Russia, I like, I couldn't bring everything back to the US, like I had to throw a lot of stuff out from my apartment, um, and I ended up having to abandon my whole bottle of Pilot Ink. And another brown, so clearly I have a theme. Anyway, so we're gonna just put a black Pelican cartridge in the Quebeco, because that seems like our option. Some pilots. I do have. No, yep, yeah, that seems like our option, y'all. So that's what we're just gonna do. And we're just gonna write in black. Oh, wait, no, we have this turquoise. But there's. Like, the weird turquoise versus this green pen body, it doesn't do it for me. I don't like that. I feel like it messes with me psychologically. I don't like it. So we're gonna skip over that. But maybe we can use the turquoise in something else. I'm just taking a look at my like nice fountain pens that I don't use very often because I feel like they're too nice. <laughs> um, yeah, if anyone wants to know, we can talk about those later. Just a side note, this is the coffee I'm drinking. Uh, I made a cafe au lait with this. I used to always drink instant coffee in Europe. Um, in the US, it's not very good. But this Juan Valdez, which I purchased at the Walmart here on a whim, thinking, okay, let's try this, tastes amazing. So, and it's just quicker and easier. I don't drink it every day. I like to make real, like, drip coffee in the morning before I go to campus. But if you're in your local Walmart, this was less than six bucks, and it absolutely has the best taste. Just throwing it out there. Zenglyph's been enjoying the Pelican 4001 ink in your Twisby Go. I used to have the dye mine ink in there and it was a bit too dry. I think I need to find, since we're talking about Twisby, I think I need to find maybe a drier ink because this is the Twisby Eco with the emerald green Twisby ink. And it's just really wet. And maybe I'm just not used to that. Um, Let's do a sojourn over here to the Twisby. And it's, I feel like the Twisby, the nib gets really wet. The inside of the barrel gets wet with ink. I just, I guess I'm not used to this, but the body of this Twisby Eco and the feel of it is 10 out of 10. Like, it just feels awesome. This is, I believe, the medium, which I like. That's what the ink looks like. Emerald green, it's just very wet, I don't know. Also, I don't always know the right terminology, so when I say stuff, I don't always know if that's the right word to describe something. Just like if you get wine tasting and like people are asking you like, oh, what's the undertone of this and tastes like this and blah, blah, blah. I never know what to say and I'm just like, oh, it's good. Oh, I like it. Oh yeah, I, I taste the cherry. Like, I don't, I don't know the real words, so I'm sorry. Dye mine inks are dry in my experience, so maybe I need to try them. Maybe that's a good fit for me. Okay, hit of coffee. Also, you may hear the bugs outside because the wildlife in Tennessee is very loud. Okay, we're over it. We're putting a black cartridge in our Quebeco, Quebeco, and we're not um, 
we are not, what are we not doing? We're not putting the clip on. So I don't remember where I got these Pelican cartridges, probably in, on some European trip. So tomorrow is the first home football game here. So I will be staying far away from downtown and campus because football is a very big deal here. Basically, the main part of the city like shuts down for it. Traffic's insane. You actually cannot park on campus. And if you park on a metered spot in the city, it's $25 a day instead of like the normal hourly rate. And if you don't, like they tow people, it's like this whole big thing. And when they were telling me about it today, I was like, mm, we'll be staying far away from downtown this weekend. No thanks. Pass. Okay, while we let this Quebeco dry up, I'm gonna ask you all your opinion on my next thing. Zenglyph says you have De Atramenti ink in your Twisby Eco and it definitely wet. The pen is, that pen is a medium nib. Okay. Um, this is medium, right? Yeah. So, like, the, see, I don't know if you can see. See how wet, like, the front of the nib is? I rarely use a fountain pen that has, like, there's drops of ink on there. Oh, you probably can't see it. They're, like, blobs of ink on the front side of the nib, and I'm just not used to that. Is it because it's vacuum filler? Is it because I have it, you have to leave it vertical or, I mean, horizontal? I don't know, but... I feel like when I open the Twisby, like, blocks of ink are everywhere. <laughs> maybe that's dramatic. Um, so maybe it's the ink, maybe it's me. I still love and the feel of this and the thickness of it and everything, so I'm still happy. I did see, I forget which one it's called, the new blue one with the rose or copper trim, however you call it. That one looks really beautiful in the pictures and classic looking, but also, like, modern at the same time. Anyway, so let the Quebeca do this thing. Here's my question. This is a Waterman fountain pen. This is the one that I dropped with the nib face down on a brick floor. <laughs> and the nib just looks so sad. I don't know if you can see that. It's not happy. It's, yeah. So I basically stopped using it after that because I think uh, it wouldn't work anymore. I think I did more damage or something. Um, but at the same time, I, this was gifted to me and I have bad association now with the person who had given it to me years ago and I, they're not in my life anymore and I don't want you to think about it at all. So probably what I'll do is if I can get it to work, I'll give it away to someone. This is the Waterman, oh, I forget what it's called, Hemisphere made in France, it was purchased in Europe. Like I said, it was gifted to me. Um, it's a nice, just classic fountain pen. Um, all metal body, the grip section is plastic or acrylic, I don't, again, don't know the terms for that. But I wonder if I got pliers, if I clean the nib, got pliers, straighten the nib up, and tried it with just, you know, a standard ink cartridge just to see if it would flow, if it would. But I'm, I was just like, mm, I'm gonna ask you all before I touch anything. Not that I can make it worse, right? Okay, so it is a Twisby thing, Jessica. Welcome, happy Friday, thanks for joining us. Let me know what you're up to this weekend. You have bad luck with Twisby, you currently own none. Well, this is my first Twisby because a lot of you were using them and for years, I was like scared of the whole thing with the wrench that you get. And then I was even thinking like, what if this is in your bag and it like turns? Does that push all the ink out? I feel like these are legitimate like worries for someone like me. Hence you saw what happened to the nib for this one. Um, but yeah, look how it's just like clumpy. Look at that. I'm just not used to that at all. So do I need to switch it up? Does it need to be a different like model, I don't know, but still love it. Perfect color for fall too, by the way. 
Nibmeister. Yeah, maybe the yeah. That's the thing. I'm like, I wouldn't do it because then I'm I'm gonna make the whole feed messed up too if it isn't already messed up. I wonder what happened if we just like, yeah. See, and I have not used this since I came since Poland in 2019. So it's probably it's four years, almost four years. Uh, and it's like ink and dirt. We were outside, I don't, it was like a brick floor. <laughs> and I'm not the kind of person that drops things. I might be clumsy in other ways, but I don't drop things. I've like never dropped my phone. I'm not one of those people that their phone cracks every three months. Like I'm very like careful. And for some reason that day, I literally was like oh, holding it like this. <laughs> I dropped it and it went straight down outside on a brick floor. And this is the result. So, funny enough, maybe it was the universe telling me to get away from this person because, yeah, I was with the person when it happened. So, anyway, um, let's see if the Caveco is inked up. This is a Leuchtsturm Plain soft cover B6 Plus, I think this size is called. Notebook and. If anyone's curious, if you have a Barnes and Noble near you, there's one here. Um, Fabriano, which is an Italian notebook company. I don't know if I made a post for this. I feel like I did. They now have in my Barnes and Noble a whole shelf of different Fabriano made in Italy notebooks, ranging from A4 to A6 size. So, if you're kind of bored of your local place only having Moleskin or like whatever, just regular notebooks, <laughs> check out your Barnes and Noble. And then upgraded ones that have like the paper source in them. Uh, this one has Fabriano. I buy my Fabriano notebooks at like art supply stores because surprisingly they carry a lot of Fabriano notebooks. But these are ones I've never seen before. On the pricier side, of course, probably the, in the ballpark of a Moleskine, so I think a B6 size would be like $14.99 or something, so just throwing that out there. Midori MD paper for your fountain pens. Yes, and I have, no, I have in a Midori MD notebook, which I cannot find after the move. Um, maybe you have it. But I haven't used a fountain pen with it yet. I've only used like a jet stream or something. No idea where it is, but I think I saw a post today from, was it Jet Pens? That Midori is gonna have like the Midori planner. I've never used them for their planner or whatever. Um, let's see if I should have cleaned this Caveco because we're not having we're not having a luck today with this. Okay, should have probably cleaned it. All right, moving on. So this is, this is a Parker fountain pen. Surprisingly, I got this at like Staples or Office Depot. This might have been like a pandemic Finally, things were opening purchase, and I saw this in store, made in France. Um, just your classic fountain pen. I love the Parker Jotter, and I mentioned a million times my Zenith um, pens from Poland that I don't take anywhere with me because I'm so paranoid I'm gonna lose them, um, that they just stay here. Because, yeah, so this one we're definitely going to have to do a wash. Look at that. There's, like, spots and stains and Lord knows what on here. So let's take a vote. How do you think I should wash this? I was thinking of just dunking it and soaking it in cold water for a couple hours and then drying off. And then maybe tomorrow putting an ink cartridge in here. Let's see if there is an ink cartridge because, again, who knows? There is no ink cartridge in here. And if I recall, this does take the standard cartridge. But I have 
a Parker ink refill for fountain pen. I have no idea where this came from. It was either gifted to me or maybe it came with a pen made in France. I could have very well brought it from Europe somewhere because I have a Parker mechanical pencil somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, how many are missing? Okay, none are missing. There's five in here, which means it didn't come with the pen because if it came with the pen, I would have used this one. So I have no idea where this Parker ink came from. Once this pen is cleaned, let's ink it up with the Parker ink cartridge. An analog planner, your vote is for soak the nib in water overnight, and that's what we shall do. Okay, analog planner is asking, do you ever have issues with oils from your hand, making it difficult to write with certain pens? That's a good question. And Zenglyph says, I can't say, but I noticed that some pen and inks would skip and other pens would be smooth on the same paper. So far, Twisby go in fine, and Pelican ink has been writing really well. That is a really good question to ask. I don't know if anyone else does it, but whenever I touch my fountain pens or honestly my Galen leather planner or my traveler's notebook, I'm so paranoid that I wash my hands beforehand. Like I won't eat something or, you know, anything and then like pick up my traveler's notebook. <laughs> I want my hands to be clean. I won't even put hand cream on or lotion or anything because I just don't like the feeling of that lotion coming off on my leather cover or my pen or whatever, or even the paper, really. So, could just be a me thing, but yeah. So, we're gonna take this nib and we're gonna just go ahead and plop it in here into an Easter egg dyeing cup that I used to clean out fountain pens. Don't know how this one survived the moves and why I only have the pink one left. I'm pretty sure it came with like a dozen cups. This is the only one that I had. So we're just gonna let it soak and you can already kind of see the blue. Okay, so this is a fun mystery. Apparently when I used this Parker pen, I had blue ink in there. Don't know which blue ink it was. Must have been some other Parker blue ink. But that's that. Do I have a Parker blue ink box of cartridges? No. So I do have a Lamy, uh, just because I saw this. This I bought in Greece for one... 70 euro and the last time I was in Greece was Christmas 2018 um, Something like that. So I'm sure the price is higher now But that's how cheaper stuff was in Europe than it would be here because this probably would be like Seven dollars at Staples where there it was like two dollars. It's just goes to show you I can't even imagine does anyone when you're on the Hobonichi website you fall in love with something and then you click it and it says Japan only because that drives me crazy. Like you know, all the special items that you can only get for the Japan customers are exactly the ones that my eyes go to first. Again, what does that say about me? You say you love Mahjon and Kobeko on Tomoe River paper all in fine. Okay, fine. And then Adeline Planner says, I think the skipping is from skin oils. I now make sure to rest my hand on scrap paper when I use Midori MD. Oh, the resting hand thing on like the ink blotter thing, right? That was like a whole, We I think we had that conversation about something when I bought my Tomori River notebook from Galen Leather. I think it comes with a blotter, right? Um, which I don't have in front of me. But it was like a mystery when I unboxed it because I didn't know what it was supposed to do. Did you see that there was Loft exclusive Back to the Future themed covers? Loft is a stationary storage pan. Loft, Loft, do I know Loft? Is Loft, no, that's Itoya. I'm thinking of that store in Ginza in Tokyo. Don't think I know Loft. Ooh, it was really blue. See, that's the kind of blue that I like. Anyway, um, so we have the Pelican. We are not gonna self-operate on the, what is this? Waterman, Waterman Paris Hemisphere. We're gonna, we're gonna figure that out. But at the same time, it's like, I don't wanna pay someone to fix it. So maybe I can just like rehome it and someone will fix it. Um, did not clean the Quebeco, so pass on that. Wow, we're really, I'm really not doing good tonight. Like I already have three strikes with my fountain pens here. Okay, 
What else can we try? Um, this was definitely a pandemic purchase because I remember I bought it off Amazon. This is the Oto Tasha. Um, doesn't that mean pocket in German? I can't remember. Or er, pocket or no? Okay. Um, this is cool because it's pocket size, but when you post the pen, it becomes full size. Don't know why I got the silver. I was, must have been thinking I wanted like something classic. So here we are. Is it inked up? Probably not. Okay, there's no ink cartridge in here. So I'm thinking it takes standard ink cartridges because Oto doesn't have anything proprietary or do they? Let me know in the comments. And this says, Iridium points. Don't know the, the size of this. I'm gonna say it's medium because I think a Japanese fine would be too fine for me. Downside to this pen, because these things aren't always talked about. It has like an aluminum scratchy sound and feeling to it. If you're the kind of person who doesn't like when your fork scrapes the plates or a knife scrapes the plates, this pen is not for you. <laughs> Um, it looks nice and sleek, but when you post it, it has that noise. It's just very, like, noisy. Uh, yeah. So we also need to clean out this one. This is another fail. I'll have to get another cup. Or can we vote? Can you clean different nibs in one cup of water, or should there be a separate cup for each nib? Don't know how that would play in. I'm gonna ask you all. Paper and Stalley wasn't too impressed with Quebec, though. Skipping all the time. You know, when I first started Quebec years ago, like when I bought it from Tokyo Pen Shop, it had to have been 2016. I didn't like how scratchy they were, and I stopped touching them for years because of that reason. So it could have just been the paper I was using, but other people complain that they're scratchy too. So just must be something that it is. Oh, Squibble Design is here. Welcome. I think it's Saturday where you are, isn't it? Happy Saturday. You're pottering around doing chores while I listen. Hope your week's been good. Oh, thank you so much. Hope your week's been good. Let us know what you're up to this weekend. I'm adjusting to my teaching life, which is exhausting, <laughs> even though I'm only technically part-time teaching. Um, it's just a lot, a lot on my brain and my body. And I, instead of being upset that I feel behind on stuff, I'm just recognizing that it's an adjustment and probably in a few weeks I'll be feeling my normal self. But yeah, I come home every day and I'm just like tired. But I was only gone for nine or 10 hours. Like I leave at 6.45 in the morning. I'm usually home from campus by 5 p.m. Maybe a little bit earlier. Um, but like, I feel like I could lay down and fall asleep at that time. Like that's how tired I'm feeling. You can, but be careful not the dam. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm afraid of damaging nibs. Let's avoid that. Um, we talked about plotter last time, and I talked about... Um, oh, so some of the Quebecos you own are scratchy and some are not. And it's just like there's no rhyme or reason. It's not the particular model. It's just that must be how they make their nibs, I guess. Has anyone here tried a plotter binder? I know I asked that last week, but after watching Job's live, I'm just curious if anyone else has tried a plotter. You're having a lovely sunny spring Saturday. You're having a chill day today. Hoping to go for a walk later. Yes, I'm glad you were able to catch the stream. Um, what's the temperature there? Because it's spring for you all in New Zealand. Um, Although you'll probably say it in Celsius and my brain won't be able to translate, but yeah, no pattern at all. Not surprising. Sometimes things are just hit or miss, I guess. So this we need to clean. Um, you heard Coveco quality control isn't the best, especially on the cheap steel news. Which is wild because German manufacturing is known to be higher quality, even in the stationary worlds. So that's disappointing. Um, speaking of German manufacturing, this is from online, which I showed. This is my favorite 
Other favorite besides Stedler, German brand that isn't really popular in the, like you can't really get it in the US unless you order it from specific stores. It's not like common, but in, over in Europe it's pretty common. And I bought this in whatever, there's like a fancy department store. And I was I in Dresden? I honestly don't remember where I was at the time, but this was like from like a department store and I think it might've been Christmas time. I don't know, I was just feeling it. It is just like an executive looking pen and I, it is ballpoint. And I bought it. I just feel like this is what you would do when you like sign checks or sign a mortgage or something. <laughs> anyway, tangents. Um, Here's a fountain pen that I would like to start using. This is the Pilot Lucinda. It's just very classic looking to me. This is probably like what a like Wikipedia entry for fountain pen in my head would look like. And I actually had bought the Ballpoint first because I was obsessed with this. This was also one of my bigger purchases when I got my good job that I could like afford it because this was a pricey ballpoint. But what's cool about this is that it's a clicker, even though it doesn't look like it'd be. And it is lovely pilot ballpoint ink. And I just, and I bought these separately like a year apart. And I was like a, so focused on I wanted to have them matching. Like look at they they match. Like your fountain pen, your ballpoint pen. Why did I think like that? I don't know. I'm just weird. Oh, 16 degrees Celsius. Oh, so it is a nice spring day. Going for a walk sounds like a really good idea. I was gonna do that earlier, but it started raining when I got home. Like the moment I got inside my apartment, it started a downpour even though it was sunny out and it said 0% chance of rain. So I just took that as a sign that I should stay in. This is Pilot Fine. Side note, I love the design on the nib. It's very like, with like the, I don't know what you call it. Let's see if it has ink. Oh, there is a cartridge in there. This cartridge has to have been in there for a long time, at least a year, if not, maybe two. Let's just go ahead and see if it writes. Wow, okay. Go pilot. This is pilot Lucinda, and I'm assuming this is just the black ink. So I know this fountain pen seals good because it had to, it had to have been, it was definitely before I moved to Tennessee and it was definitely, it's had to have been like, at least, I don't know, a year. I could not believe it, right? Cause I've had fountain pens that I would not use for like three weeks and it would dry up, which is one reason why I wanted to try the Twisby because it's supposed to last longer, right? And so far it has. I mean, I inked this up probably six weeks ago when I first got it and it still writes on the first time. Okay, so this is really impressive. So that's the pile of Lucinda. Okay, so we have one success so far. Um, This is Pilot Metropolitan, if anyone recalls like this, the animal print collection. But when I was living in, I bought this when I was living in Russia and the pilots there don't accept pilot cartridges. They accept international standard. And that's a thing where they manufacture them differently in certain countries for certain markets, because I guess it's harder to buy the pilot and cartridges there. Anyway, this is medium and I can't tell if that gray part under the nib was always gray or it needs to be cleaned and it was a different color and it's just like a blue gray from whatever ink I had in there. That is also a possibility. Zenglyph Swisby holds inks for months. That's awesome. That's, I think that's how they like advertise, right? That when you put the cap on and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, look how dirty that feeder is. Oh my gosh. Okay. Clearly, I do not clean very well. Let me know if you have like a cleaning routine. Maybe I should just like <laughs> take all my fountain pens once a month and just clean them just like you would clean something else in your house. And there's a random blue. Oh, 
Here is a blue Coveco International cartridge that was randomly in this pocket of my pencil case. I have no idea where this came from. I don't remember buying Quebeco cartridges, especially in blue. So maybe this is the one that it came with? Don't know. And side note, this is a Fisher Space Pen. I don't know why I got this originally. I have a feeling it's because when I lived in Moscow, I had to work outside a lot and I had to write outside a lot. And I bought this because this is supposed to write in extreme temperatures and obviously it gets very cold there. And I flew a lot too, so I always wanted to have a pen with me. And I think I actually kept this in my like suitcase front pocket or something. I just like it because it's just, I feel like I'm about to go through another pocket size pen phase. Does anyone go through phases like I do? Because there'll be like a month where I think anything pocket size is awesome. Hence this and this and this. And then I'll be tired of that. And then six months later, I'll be really into fountain pens that look like a CEO would use. <laughs> and I'll only buy those. Like, it's just a weird, unexplainable phenomenon. But I will say this Pilot ink looks really nice and the fine size is actually nice. It's just like an everyday kind of look, but look how clean it is. Anyway, again, I could be using the wrong words. You have your full case of Quebecos. Yes, my fingers are very big, which is why um, whenever I'm comparing things like the note when I say this is why I can't have the Hobonichi regular size because it's literally the size of my hand and I have to have a cousin because I have big hands I'm tall I'm six foot four I hate flying in economy um that's why I was good at piano <laughs> and yeah yes there there's your reason that's why you have to have a variety of pens because then when you're changing up your Mood, you have things on hand and the mood can change with you. That is absolutely correct. But I don't think... What else happened this week in the stationary world? Um, we talked about Plotter. Oh, I saw... Oh, on Instagram I saw... Jill plans the day. She posted a haul for, and by just saw, I mean I literally was scrolling through it while I was making my coffee, so right before we started the live stream, so I don't know if it's been anywhere else. I guess she made, she ordered her Jibun Techo 2024 from Kokuyo. I did not know that Kokuyo USA, like Kokuyo will ship to the US, kind of like Koonichi, and she had some other items, I just quickly looked at it, so. Jibun Techo is what I wanted to use for my 2024 planner. I still am thinking that right now because I don't like the Tomoe River and Hobonichi. Even though I've been using an inexpensive Amazon planner lately, which I'm <laughs> grappling if I should make a video about, but I've actually been using it every day and loving it. And I'm afraid if I share with others that I love it and I'm using it, I'll find something else and I'll stop using it. Don't know if that mentality makes sense to anyone else. It's kind of like if you start telling people you're going to the gym, you'll like stop going. <laughs> so yeah. So I have a lot of cleaning to do. Um, that's pretty much it for me on this Friday. Does anyone have, have any fun things they want to share? Let's see, it's September 8th today. Is anyone planning on doing National Novel Writing Month in November? Is that what it's called? National Nano Womo, right? Like National Novel Writing Month? I tried to do it years ago. Obviously, it failed miserably. You want your friends move to Tennessee? Where? Nano Rimo. Oh, okay, I was close. <laughs> what did I say? Nano. 
No, no. <laughs> yes. Don't know if I'll be writing a novel this November, but it, I think it might be a fun challenge. I don't know. Yes, Tennessee, because I'm in East Tennessee, which I've only ever been, I've really never been in many other parts of Tennessee yet. So I don't know how different it is from like West Tennessee. Um, I haven't been in Nashville yet. That's two hours away. Nashville's definitely on my list. I'd love to go to Chattanooga. I did get an offer from the University of Memphis, but I chose this offer here instead. So maybe someday I get to go to Memphis for a conference or something. Um, have not been to Dollywood yet. Don't worry, that'll be happening this fall because we basically get half price tickets. Um, and it's about a 30 minute drive away, so it's definitely doable. And obviously when anyone ever comes and visits me, Dollywood's probably the first place that they're gonna wanna go. Um, yeah. Christiana, Tennessee. Hmm, no idea where that is. I could have a student from there since probably, I'll say half of my students are from t Tennessee and a lot of them are from like, you know, smaller towns or rural towns and they've like lived there here their whole lives. It's an interesting place. It's very different from where I've lived before uh, in my life and in the past four years, but the nice thing is people are definitely friendly down here, which is a nice change of pace. You might do NaNoWriMo. You're on off here with a book writing, too much going on at work. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, preaching to the choir. Totally get it. It's hard to write a novel when you don't work and you don't have responsibilities and like a life, right? <laughs> so it's, I think it's even harder when you have all those other things on top of it. I just view it as a way as maybe like, you know, obviously you don't have to write your whole novel. Maybe you just want to write like your first chapter. But I remember when it first caught on, the first way I heard about it was in from Goulet Pens, like they, they did a, either did a video or, I forget, like there was someone involved in it, posted a video, this was a long time ago, where they like talked about national, and like I remember logging on and creating an account and I was gonna type my words and it, you get to chat with people and blah, 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 and it never turned out to be anything. But I think it might be a fun way to kind of spend a few minutes once in a while in a contained period, you know, like November's 30 days, you can just kind of do a couple days of it. It might be fun. Your boss left and now you're a project manager to a big project. Oh my goodness. Now are they gonna hire someone else or now you're just gonna be PM? Project management is just really hard because you literally have to do everything all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I'm i horrible with challenges. I wanna do, I mean, everyone's been doing challenges here on YouTube, um, you know, whether it's like the Monday plan with me or whatever, but I feel like I'm just not good with sticking with things. And I obviously don't wanna not be good at that, but I, then I like lose motivation because when I'm failing at the thing that I wanted to do, I get mad at myself and I start to dislike it, right? I guess that's basic psychology. So it's like, I don't wanna force myself to do a challenge that I know in two weeks will mess me up. But again, some challenges are good. My cat comic for Hobonichi was born out of <laughs> a challenge we made up here on YouTube where I told y'all I was gonna journal on my trip starting July 1st on my Hobonichi Avec back in 2022 and I was in my hotel and I did. I drew the cat and then I was drawing it every day. So you all held me accountable for that and I got to share it and talk about it. So somehow that stuck, um, but other ones don't. Well, if they give you the position, does that mean you get more money? I mean, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing was I've literally never had a cat. Um, 
I would probably say I'm a dog person, but now obviously I'm a cat person. And that's literally how my cat drawings were born. And it was from the Hobonichi life book that I saw the cat and I was like, I can draw that. I can make my own cat and have his own fun life and get to do his PhD. <laughs> so yeah. This is when I did the gouache paint. Whew, was that a fail? Did not work very well, but anyway. So, does anyone have any last rounds, things that we all need to know, or you're gonna do a challenge? Swivel Design's enjoying her Saturday walk, which sounds good, maybe I'll go for a walk tomorrow. Um, I actually walk a lot when I'm at campus, literally, I have to park my car at a different college and walk through the rest of the day to the other part of campus. So a day on campus, I usually get at least 10,000 steps just from walking around from building to building that I have to go to. But I do want to just go for a walk with like my headphones in and just like, just enjoy the fall air, but we shall see. More money, but more responsibility. Nice challenge. Ooh. Do you want to have the responsibility? Or maybe just not right now? The holidays will be... Yeah, you're right. You're We're going to start seeing the, um, the countdown of Christmas, the um, December dailies, which I do try to do Job's December dailies. I've tried. Um, what's the ink... Advent, advent calendar, that's the word I'm thinking of. We're gonna see the advent calendar soon with the inks and the challenge and the 30 days and blah, blah, blah. Like that's just around the corner and that stresses me out. So I don't plan on doing much of that. Although, good thing about my job is I have off basically for a month from mid-December to mid-January. So I might actually have time to do some challenges then. Although secretly I hope to travel because I don't know if I'll go to Poland. I don't know if I'll go, I'm not sure where I'm gonna go yet, but I feel like I have to go somewhere. Inktober, that's what it, okay, Inktober. Now, what's the premise of Inktober? Because I've never done it and I've seen people talk about it, but I feel like I don't know. Is that where you're just using your different inks in your planner and hashtagging Inktober and uploading it? Or is it like, there's a certain prompt that someone posts on their account that you follow. Daily drawings. You're just going to enjoy getting your 20 minute Yeah, there you go. Just enjoy the new year. You don't need anything additional. I'm still surprised so many people the first week of September can even mentally think about 2024 planners. Like I'm just not looking forward to that. Yeah, I feel like it's just way too early. It's like, um, when you see Halloween stuff out, like after 4th of July, and it's like, it's still summer. I'm not thinking about trick or treating. <laughs> Maybe it is daily drawing. I feel like someone posts something on Instagram, don't they? For Inktober. Well, I will not be doing Inktober only because I think October is the month that goes by the fastest. Like before you know it, it's November. And I don't want another thing to make October to go fast because I like October. It says those improve inking skills and positive drawing habits. Well, that's a nice message. Jake Parker. Okay. Positive drawing habits. I mean, at least it's not like a New Year's thing or a Christmas thing, because I feel like we have enough of those. So October, I guess. I do want to do more cafe journaling or go outside journaling or whatever now that the weather is improving, like I do want to bring my journal and a fountain pen to campus, sit outside in a beautiful setting and do stuff and just enjoy the moment. So that is one thing I want to do. That'll be my challenge. Nazia, you just made it. We're about to call it a night, but we're so glad that you're able to pop on. Let us know what you're up to this weekend and how you're doing. We were just playing with some fountain pens. I've learned that I have to clean them better. Um, does Jake Parker post prompts? I'm guessing that's, 
I know I've seen you all do, some of y'all have done the Inktober. I've seen it. I've just never done it. Clearly, you see with my ink problems and my cleaning of fountain pen problems that I would fail miserably at an ink challenge because all my cartridges are mixed up and my nibs are messed up and I just get confused. So maybe someone like me needs the challenge where I can get better. Yeah. Also, oh, I forgot to ask because we're always asking. First, first of thing, let me know in the comment if you're watch if you watched a good movie this week or you're watching a good TV series or um, what you've just been watching or, or reading lately. Because I feel like we used to, I used to, used to ask that like what show were you binge watching or what movie did you just watch that you want to share. And second, if Kim Cruz is watching <clears throat> on the replay. Let us know if you're still taking your Korean class and how's it going? <laughs> because Kim was signing up for a Korean language class at her local college. And I think by now she probably would have started unless the school was on a count, uh, quarter system, which they probably start like next week. But um, Kim, if you're watching, let us know how's Korean going. Are you fluent yet? <laughs> Lizzie is babysitting for your cousin. The kids and I are gonna have all kinds of fun. Oh, that's nice. How old are the kids? Hopefully the weather's nice, they can like play outside and stuff. So we're gonna clean. I'm going to clean the Quebeco because yeah. I think what I'll do is take out this ink cartridge. Hopefully that won't cause any issues and then clean it and then try to reuse this cartridge. I don't know if anyone else does that. I would think it's okay. Why would it be, it shouldn't cause a problem. Just the ink would dry out if it sits open too long, I guess. And then we want to, let's, we'll think about the Waterman situation and we should clean the Tasha. I just, that noise. I don't even think I'm, I would use this because of that noise. That like irks me. So maybe I'm not gonna clean that. Well, maybe, I don't know. But I really wanna use the Quebeco. I feel like it's just a nice, like look at that. That is like a nice on the go. I wanna sit down and do some long form journaling at Starbucks. Whip this out, yeah. Five, 10, and 15, that's an interesting range of kids. That'll be fun. Do you have anything specific planned with them or are you just gonna let them decide what they wanna do? I'm not around kids much because um, my family doesn't live around here and my niece is now in high school. She just started high school this week, which is crazy to me. And my, my other niece is in fourth grade. So fourth and ninth grade. But every time I do get to see them, we always have fun. Hopefully I get to see them maybe around Christmas time or spring break or in the summer, I'm not sure. Skydiving simulator. Okay, that's like a really fun thing. That's not like a random like, oh, um, want to go on, like, that's pretty cool. Is that the Skyfall or whatever, where it's like you, I know I've seen them before. I've driven past them. I think it's called Skyfall. Where it's like you go in the building and yeah, I could never do that, but I'm sure the kids will love it. And I'm gonna clean out the Parker and we're gonna try the Parker ink. Um, oh, we're already cleaning out the Parker. That's what's soaking. I started looking for the nib. Oops, and I spilled water out of the cup. See, this is what, 
Uh, I don't know how. Okay, we're good. Okay, so it is the sky. Okay, that's awesome. Did you do it? <laughs> or just the kids are gonna do it? You've done it. That's too scary for me, but good for you. I guess it feels weird, right? Because it feels like there's Lots of wind and... I guess it's like being on a roller coaster where it makes you feel like really alive and energetic afterwards. It's like the rush of it. That's the word, the rush. Well, I hope you have a fun time. You have your Aleve first. <laughs> yes, get yourself some Aleve liquid gels and whatever migraine medication you might need in case afterwards it really hits you. That is a good point. Well, I think I'm going to actually start reading my academic journal that I have to read 200 pages of by next week. And maybe watching something on Netflix. Whoops, sorry. Um, yeah, so thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, I hope to have some time to watch your videos throughout this weekend. And enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your fountain pens, enjoy your writing. Just enjoy the people you have around you and just have fun. I will talk to you all later. Take care.